The dream of early retirement can be alluring with visions of spending more time on your hobbies, traveling the world, or simply just enjoying life at a slower pace. However, without proper financial planning, this dream can remain just that, a dream. So you have to realize that most of the time, whenever you want to do something that's exceptional, like retiring earlier than many people in the country, it will require you to do some research to create a plan and to stick to that plan. There are challenges that you'll face if you're going after this ambitious goal. And in this video, we'll identify some of those challenges and explore the various strategies one can adopt and keep an eye out for to ensure that they're financially prepared to retire earlier than the traditional retirement age. Okay, so I have Katie Johnston with us. Thank you very much. I've wrangled you away from your busy schedule to uh, just spend a little bit of time talking about this whole early retirement thing. So let's first start off by, for those that may not know, uh, I'm one of the one of the advisors at um, Stonehouse. I'm a CFP. You're another advisor at Stonehouse. Between the two of us, our day is primarily spent, when I don't make you get in front of the camera, is primarily spent working with folks that are either at some stage, like approaching retirement, right at that doorway to retirement, and certainly in retirement, hopefully enjoying a good, long, uh, happy one. And one of the things that we often deal with is people looking at early retirement. And then I would even say for the folks that are planning early retirement, we're talking 20s and 30s. They're saying, I want to get out. of, I don't want to work as long as my parents or I want to they have ambitious goals, but those goals come with, um, well, basically they come with a price. I don't want to say a price, but a, you have to have some different things going on. And, and we're going to talk about some of those things you have to at least start thinking about if you want to retire early, right? So Katie, let's talk first about what is the definition of sort of back up and say, what's the definition of what would you call early retirement? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's uh, very individualized, but when we as financial advisors are talking with people about early retirement, um, we're probably talking about anyone in the 55 to 60 age range um, we would consider an early retirement. Yeah. Yeah. And and so I want to throw a, a chart on the, on the screen, if you will, and uh, it's going to show you, you know, this trend here that we have to talk about. And I think you brought it up when you first looked at this table. It wasn't a surprise, but a couple of things that we talked about were? Uh, well, a couple of things that we talked about were that uh, you can see the ages over the past few decades have gone up. They've crept up somewhat. Um, and also that women tend to retire a little bit earlier than men. Yeah. I'm not going to read into that. You know, I'm the last one that, that should <laughs> pontificate of the why some of these numbers exist. But the reality is... When someone's talking about retiring, they're probably, as you said, early retirement, I should say, is probably 55 to 60, maybe as early as 62, right? Right, yeah. And 62 is kind of a bogey because that's when you can start collecting Social Security. So I think people think any time in that range is early retirement. So mm -hmm. we have some things that we want to talk about that they need to start thinking about if they are if they want to hit those goals of early retirement because those are ambitious goals. So. You ready to dive into those? Yep. Okay. So first on that list, I, I think what we do here, what for this conversation, we've broken it up into sort of different groupings of, of issues that people need to think about. And the first one is age-based, right? So I mentioned Social Security in the beginning there. I don't know. I always assume people knew what goes on with Social Security. And I found out working through many years that a lot of folks don't fully understand it. So it took a while to weed out, but basically now everyone who has Social Security benefits coming to them that they've earned throughout their career can take full benefits at age 67. Um, you can take it as early as age 62, but you're going to take a sort of a penalty, basically a reduced benefit per month if you take it at age 62. Actually, and that, that penalty is there all the way up until your full retirement age of 67. It's just less and less of a penalty. So the longer you wait to take that that Social Security payment, the larger that payment should get. Um, so that you know, 62 is kind of a key age that people focus on if they if they're thinking about retiring early because they know that I can't get that money that monthly amount until that age, at least 62. 
Another key age is 59 and a half. And I think most people who are uh, investing in, out of their paycheck every month and putting into their retirement plan know that most of those qualified retirement plans have the age 59 and a half, that you need to be at least that old and separated from service typically to be able to withdraw um, that money and, and start taking a check for that. Because that's what most people kind of shoot for. You know, I want to be basically 60 year old to get into that plan. Uh, and the last thing I would say is for uh, certain things, uh, 403B plans, often like school teachers are a great, great example. Um, if you're separated from service and age 55, you can usually get at those plans without any sort of uh, early withdrawal penalty and things like that. So those are some age-based things to, to keep in mind. And what, do, what else do you have? So I think what we really have to focus on is the timing of the early retirement. Um, if you think about it, typically you're accumulating funds for retirement for about 30 years and then potentially having 30 years to de-accumulate those funds. To spend um, it, the fun to part. To spend it, yes. Right, right. Um, but if you're actually changing that up and now you've got to plan for 40 years of spending, right. um, then you've got to save up and be a lot more aggressive with your saving early on. Um, you also have less time to save. So if you think about it, you're going to retire early. So those years that you're making money and you're making contributions into your savings, um, there's less time to do that. So yeah. you, And time I, is really valuable, right? I don't mean to right. talk over you, but I, yeah. th in our industry, we kind of always preach to our clients the value, the power of time and compounding interest and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So 10 years makes a big difference. Right. It does. I'll talk about the psychological aspects too. And this is, I think, a part that people often overlook, which is, you know, to do what you just said, it takes a lot of discipline, mm -hmm. right? Because think about that. You're, so you're, okay, I'm going to commit to retiring at age 55 and I'm, you know, I'm 35. And that's not that much time, 20 years to really push in a lot of money, right? Mm -hmm. So that means you're spending a lot less than your peers, your friends, um, right. they're, you're doing less things, you're spending more time probably at home, maybe you're working longer hours to get some overtime or get some additional opportunities in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's hard to do. You, I, I mean, I see people do it for a year or two and then they kind of get burned out. So, um, you know, I think that people underestimate the discipline of mm -hmm. trying to, to hit a real early, it depends how early they have. And of course, it depends what their income levels are and how much they can afford to save, right. where they're living and all these things, you know? Yep. This is a, was a Gary V who's all over, he's one of the social media folks who are always talking about basically not live out of your car, but basically live in a shack and, and uh, eat out of a can of a tuna <laughs> fish or whatever. So most people don't want to go that far, but um, they also, uh, yeah, creating working habits uh, is, is another thing which, which we were just talking about. Um, I kind of, I already hit that point there, but the other one is, is that people definitely overlook is when you go to retire early, you should probably really give some thought to what is that next chapter in your life? If mm -hmm. you're, if you're retiring at 55 and everybody around you in your age group and your friend groups are still working another 10 years. So what are you doing? So if you don't have that mapped out, uh, one of our guests that we had on here the one uh, one day uh, was talking about it. it took them a couple of years to really kind of settle into retirement. So mm -hmm. something they should probably think about too. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, one of our other advisors at Stonehouse, Kirk, actually mentioned that he tends to talk to his clients about thinking of it in 10-year periods of time. So if you retire at 55, what are you going to be doing from age 55 to 65? then what are you going yeah. to be doing from age 65 to 75 and so on? And breaking it up in those 10-year periods of time can kind of help you determine and figure out what are you going to be doing at that age and yeah. in that time frame. Leave it to Kirk to break it yeah. down to something simple. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Yeah. You mentioned about that window shrinking, right? If you're, if you're funding a longer retirement, uh, that means you need to start early and start aggressive when it comes to saving. And, you know, I think we've told people a lot of times the best time to start saving or planning is today. Mm -hmm. So so talk to me about the the difference between uh, uh, – let's, let's talk about the chart here that, that shows the, the power of time and money combined, the compounding interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can see on the chart that uh, if you're saving $1,000 per month for 25 years at an 8% annual interest rate, um, you're going to have 
about eight to nine hundred thousand dollars less than if you saved that same amount for an additional 10 years, 35 years um, at a, the same interest rate. So that really shows you the power of time in that if you just have a 10 year difference, um, you're talking a close to a million dollar difference. Yeah. At the end of the day, yeah. At the end of the that chart, you know, as you go out, that the tail, the the difference between those two gets wider and wider. Right? right. So I, a lot of folks that come to us are like, I I wanted to do this five years ago, I just never got around to it. Mm -hmm. so, I, so I guess the theme is, get around to it. Right. right? Yeah. <laughs> now, like you said, the time is now. Yeah. Perfect. So when you talk about being aggressive in your savings, right? So the typical. What's the difference between what a typical person who's retiring, let's say, 65 versus somebody that wants to retire as early as 55, 58? What kind of a difference in savings amounts or rates are we talking about here? Mm -hmm. So typically when we meet with someone who's planning for a standard retirement at 62, 65 age, um, we're going to recommend that they save about 15 percent of their okay. income. Um, but that's going to change drastically if someone comes in and says they want to try to retire early. Um, we're looking at potentially needing to save up to 50% of your income, depending on the lifestyle that you're going to want to live in retirement. Right. Um, you know, you really have to factor in what kind of expenses you're going to have in retirement, and that's going to come back into how much do you really need to save in order to retire early. Yeah. Although a nice little hidden gem here is... When you tell somebody right now you need to save half your paycheck, that's probably most of us probably said no way. Yeah. All right, I guess I just work longer, right? Yeah. But for those people who do have that goal, one of the cool things is is they're probably used to living pretty well below their means, certainly substantially below their means. That's right. So the odds are probably really highly stacked in their favor when they get to retirement because you and I know that people a lot of times they hit that retirement uh, starting point, if you will, and, and their spending goes up. They, mm -hmm. they want to do all this traveling. They want to do all these things. Yep. And that might still happen, but but this person is used to living well within their means. So right. that's a really good habit that a, that an early retirement person would uh, have as a goal and have as a sort of a, a side effect, a good side effect. Mm -hmm. So I guess when you talk about aggressively investing, which we just covered, I guess the question is, where do I put that money? Where do, you, where do you typically recommend somebody who's, you know, 25 versus maybe somebody who's 45, you know, start, and they only have maybe 10 years left to get that goal? How, how do you mm -hmm. recommend they, they invest that money? Typically, we're going to recommend um, that you're saving aggressively, which means you're putting in a higher percentage of your income away for savings. Um, and you're going to put that in a lot of different types of investments. So stocks, bonds, um, emerging markets, international equities, um, you know, we're going to spread that across a lot of different types of investments, but we're also going to put it in some different types of accounts too. Um, the reason for that being that we want to try to diversify your taxes in the future. Mm -hmm. um, so one other th topic to point out is that early on, you're going to, we're going to recommend that you save in more aggressive types of investments. So if you're in your 20s, sure. we're going to say, hey, you probably should try to be a little more um, at an aggressive risk level with your investing. Um, as you near retirement, uh, maybe five years or so away from actually retiring, we're gonna recommend that you scale that back, um, yeah. try to be a little bit more on the conservative side with your investing. Yeah, and I've, I've had people in front of me, I know I've said, you know, they're five years from retirement and they, they don't have what they thought they would have in there, or they wanted more. So they come into our office and they say, oh, I should be really, really aggressive now because they only have a handful of years, right? And I usually take the opposite approach and you can get very, very aggressive in the amount you contribute and mm -hmm. you know your, your savings, but to get overly aggressive as you're getting to the point of retirement is probably a fool's game. Uh, it's a dangerous game, I should say. Right. Uh, you, there's a chance you might work out better for you, but there's also probably a better chance that you might get burned and actually do more damage to yourself. So, mm -hmm. So what you're saying is, Put that money in, spread it out in a lot of different places, right. I guess, to get a smoother ride, right? I guess. Yeah. I'm saying I guess. I know the answer, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, you know, typically when uh, one type of investment is doing well, another one might not be doing so well. What you want to avoid is having everything in one basket and ev in that basket just falls right. apart. Yeah. Um, so when you're spread out across a lot of different things, it helps keep a balanced portfolio. So talk to me about uh, an often overlooked topic, which is health insurance planning. Um, you know, I don't, I used to, again, my, same with social security, I used to assume people knew things but, about it that I knew in this business, but that's not always the case. So Medicare planning, uh, I'm sorry, Medicare coverage starts at age 65. Mm -hmm. But before that, what happens? So you're covered by your employer. What happens if you leave at age 58 for most people? What do they have to start thinking about? Right. So typically when you leave your employment, um, most people don't have their health insurance covered anymore. So right. they have to go out and search and find private insurance. Um, that can be quite a big expense. Uh, so you definitely have to plan for that. And most often we typically recommend that you overestimate what you might need to spend on health planning um, because it's it's going to be a big expense for sure. Right. No one ever says, wow, I paid so very little in my health insurance coverage. Right. <laughs> right. So it's a, but it could be it could be a, a disruptor if you don't mm -hmm. really account for it properly. That's right. Okay. Can you talk to me about budget? So I, I personally feel like the word budget should be a four letter word based on how many pe how people react when we talk about hey, have you done a budget? Do you want to create a budget? And they're like, oh my gosh, no. Uh, most people don't have a budget. Uh, some people can track some of their expenses. And I think some are getting better at that these days. But um, for the most part, people often struggle with really, really nailing down how much they're spending per month, per year. Mm -hmm. um, why is it important to have to look at budgeting when you're talking early retirement? Yes, like we mentioned a little earlier, um, knowing what your expenses are going to be in retirement are going to be key to determining if you have enough money to actually retire and fund the lifestyle that you're planning on in retirement. Um, you also have to think about some things that might be a one-off situation. You've got to think about when's your roof going to need to be replaced. That's a big expense right. that might happen in retirement that could take a big chunk of your savings. Um, same thing with vehicles. When are you going to need to replace your vehicles? Yeah. Um, so it's, you're, you need to plan out your day-to-day -day budget, but you've also got a budget for some of those bigger ticket items that might come up. Yeah. And, and life throws you curveballs, right? We see it yep. all the time. People reluctantly calling up and saying, I didn't expect to need 20000 but my roof or whatever. Yeah, right. you know, those curveballs. And the, sometimes mm -hmm. they could be gut punches. So you have to have some sort of, uh, you know, uh, cushion, you know, emergency reserves, things like that, we call it. But mm -hmm. they, they need to be planned for in the budget. All right. We're on to my favorite topic, financial planning. Um I you, obviously we have a big passion for doing financial plans and 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 at least a very basic plan at a minimum to sort of provide a roadmap for people, but especially for somebody who is looking at early retirement. Why is a financial plan important? It's important because, like you mentioned, you know, there's a lot of things that can actually throw a monkey wrench into your plan right. and knock you off track and. Our financial plans are created in such a way that when something like that happens, we can help you figure out the best way to recover from that. Um, so, And that's really important, especially when you're trying to plan for an early retirement, um, because you've got to act quickly in order right. to recover. No doubt. It, and I think that's... It, it's. I, I'm always doing it to like the roadmap analogy, right? If you... If you're early on in your trip and you kind of get knocked off course, it's very easy to get back on and, and mm -hmm. head toward whatever direction you're going. In this case, whatever goal or age you're shooting for. But man, if if you don't have that basic plan, that basic map, you could be going off on a tangent in a bad direction, I should say, for a long period of time. Right. And then when if you if and when you finally realize it, it might be difficult to ever get back and, and hit your goal. Right. Right. So so our plans are you know, once you get that base plan there and you see like, yeah, I'm on track, it's very easy to check it once a year every so often or when life throws you those curveballs mm -hmm. uh, to see how did this affect me. Yeah, and I think it's important to make sure that you are checking in on it, right? So right. we we don't ever want to create a plan and then not look at it for five or more years. We want to be mm -hmm. looking at it on a regular basis to make sure you're still on track. So to go hand in hand with the financial planning, we often 
um, we talk about taxes that clients are faced with, which is why we own, uh, we have Stonehouse Tax Office as well uh, for our clients to, to use if they want. But what, why is it so important to really keep an eye on taxes even during the savings years as well as during the retirement years? Yeah, so there's different types of accounts that you can hold that can benefit you in different ways when it comes to taxes, especially when you're in the phase of taking money out of your accounts. It's important to know that you've got different places to take the money from. Right. Um, you know, if you're having a, a really great year in the stock market, you might choose to pull from a certain type of account versus another, versus if it's maybe not a great year in the market, you might choose a different type of account. Um, that really helps you with your tax planning and can benefit you in a lot of different ways when it comes to taxes. Right, which is why we have you know, the 401ks, the the 403bs, all the, the pension money typically, social mm -hmm. security, that's all pre-tax money. So right. you have, that's great. It's growing possibly more quickly in mm -hmm. there. Um, it's certainly in a better environment, but it's all taxed right. when, you go to, when you're in retirement, right? So having like a Roth IRA or mm -hmm. after-tax savings can help balance it out and gives you more right. control, right? For your tax bracket. It does. Yeah. Yep. And I think what I like about the most when you're looking at the financial plan, when you're talking about that that balance of, of sort of having pre-tax money and after-tax money and, and having more control is that ultimately, and you mentioned Kirk, we like to jokingly call it the F word in our office, but it gives our clients flexibility. Mm -hmm. So that flexibility means everything. Why, like, why is it so important? Give me some examples or insights as to why flexibility is important to any clients, whether they're early retirement or, or traditional retirement age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so flexibility is important because, again, you've got those – life happens, right? You've got all yes. these things that happen that you're not expecting in life, um, and you've got to be flexible both with your financial plan and with all of the different types of investments and accounts that you have because the more diversification that you have, the easier it is to be flexible. Right. Yeah, so – like being trapped somewhere, whether, you're, you know, let's say there's a health issue, right? And all of a sudden your health takes a change or your spouse or someone in your family, you need to take out a, a, a chunk of change, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. If you were, as you said earlier, if you're in a big tax year, you're having a good year, you're having some other investments that paid off, and now you've got to, on top of that, take it out of this taxable account. Mm -hmm. It's just like, it's not the most efficient way, and it's it's a little bit unfortunate for obviously the health issues is, is unfortunate, but to take it and, and get hit with extra taxes is like, yeah, shoot, I wish I had flexibility. Right. And if you have that after tax savings and you say, hey, I can take that all to here. I don't want to take the money out, but I need it. And uh, for myself, my family, it's there and, and it, it feels like less of a hit, I guess. Right. Yeah. So that makes total sense. So in conclusion of this video, I guess I just want to say, going back to what I mentioned earlier, that the when people say, when should I start planning or savings, the, the answer is always today. Tomorrow is an okay day, but <laughs> it's not as good as it is today. So mm -hmm. uh, how do, if somebody wants to do that, where do they go? How do they start? Well, you know, there's a lot of great resources online if you want to try to self-teach or do it yourself. That's always an option. Um, but you can also call us. We do it every day. Um, and the best way to reach us is to go to our website. Uh, there's probably a link near this video somewhere there that you could is. click. I'm sure there is, yeah. Yeah. Um, and just give us a call. We are happy to help you. Great. So there you go. Katie Johnston, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and me, uh, stonehouseretired.com if you're looking for help from us or the, all the other sites that are out there if you want to go and try to do it on your own. If you do it on your own and you're having trouble, still give us a shout. Uh, reach out to us. We'll be happy to help and get you on that path. Mm -hmm.